Is this a supplemental? I don't know. We'll figure it out. Men on track top 10. I'll just say yeah, men ten. on track 10. Yeah. Yeah. Fan requested. Was it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought the art crime Welcome. was a fan request. It was. Back they both. Welcome back to Men on Track uh, Top 10. Uh, we received a fan request to run down our top 10 episodes. If you've been listening for a while, you might have a pretty good idea what they are, but we're going to run through them real quick. Hopefully. Uh, this is uh, <laughs> Admiral Redshirt and Captains Dystrom and who's that over there? Jake Palpatine? Jake Pal. Jake's here. Jake's why, here. Why is Jake? Not <laughs> <laughs> I think he's forever Jake. <laughs> might be forever Jake. No. Forever Jake. All right, gentlemen, let's hit it. All Top right. 10. You ready? Yes. All right. Coming in at number 10. Controversial, perhaps. Spacey. Oh. Yeah. Dystrom, go. <sighs> <laughs> no pressure. A, a a human villain, yeah, who is better genetically than anyone else. Yeah, I thought. I mean, to me, to me, Space Seed is so, has is so much more because of Wrath of Khan. Yes, it probably would have been an okay type of episode, but I think because. It led to the, the the probably the one of the best science fiction movies ever made, let alone just Star Trek. Yeah. Uh, to me, top ten, but you know, it was kind of a one trick pony. It was Khan. You knew that he was gonna get control of the ship. But the way that Kirk and the beat him and everything and then he was marooned, it was still it's still a it's still a great episode. But well the context of the story being that uh this man um was frozen in cryogenics and he was from an era of barbarism on the earth Our and, era. and was one of those who <laughs> who was the, the foster of the barbarism he was a prince yes one of the genetically engineered terrors mm-hmm. yeah for me um always liked the episode from an action standpoint as a kid uh the great oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The great, the great pipe beat down. One of my all time favorites. You got the music. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, I don't have it. <laughs> don't worry. Uh, the great pipe beat down, um, and then the story again. Even when we looked at it again, the difference between a, a, a man of the past and a man of the present, good and bad. Mm-hmm. You know, some of that forcefulness that was there. Some of the some of the the will to rule, the will to take control. I, I found that interesting in the episode. That in the future, people are too weak. And in the past, mm-hmm. those guys are bully boys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Something like that. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Does that play true to the day? <laughs> some sense. Something in some to sense. Think about. In some senses, yes. Number nine. Number nine. Shore leaf. Shore leaf. I think this we're going to catch the most for this. But because, for me, Shore Leaf is about Finnegan. Yes. Yeah. And the beat down on Kirk. Well, it's it's background on Kirk that you didn't have before. Right. Yeah. Kirk has always been the golden boy. It flushes but there, out the but Kirk. But there Kirk. is a period in Kirk's life where he had a bully. Mm-hmm. And the bully was Finnegan. Mm-hmm. So you, when you look at the episode generally, you don't see that. When you look at the episodes as a whole. Kirk is always the Sterling, the leader, the, you know, but <laughs> Finnegan's, the Shore Leaf gives you a totally different side of Kirk. Yeah, you see a, you see a Kirk, you can, you can picture Kirk in a, almost as a young man being, trying to get to class without running into Finnegan. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a very relatable thing that we talked about when we did the episode. Every, you know, everybody's kind of had that experience in life. Completely different than the new movie of Kirk. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for me, also, I like the episode because of the way it's written. It opened it up for anything could have been done in this episode, and they did. They did a lot of different things, but it's people exploring their fantasies and kind of, kind of the underlying thing of "be careful what you wish for." And also, I think that that message that w- w- humans are still too primitive to even understand an advanced amusement park. Yeah, yeah. You know? It's yeah. like it, it goes back to that. Was it a, uh, what was the what, the Enterprise? 
the, the television series where they're yeah. like, you shouldn't even be out here. Yeah. And it's that touched a little bit on that. But yeah. nothing. It's in the top 10 for me because of just because of Finnegan. Kirk's, because Kirk's of, smile when he sees Finnegan again. And he's like, I'm going to I get the payback. <laughs> payback pay is a mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. pay, payback is a busted lip on an upperclassman. But <laughs> number eight, a taste of Armageddon. Yeah. I like it because it it juxtaposed reality against what we think peace is. Right. Yeah. 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 You know, Underlying theme there. Yeah. Uh, what? Uh, mutual destruction. Right. Mutually assured destruction, but also real peace or the price you have to pay to have real peace versus a false peace. Right. And and I think it it showcased the difference between a diplomat and a starship captain because from the very beginning. Kirk wasn't going to buy any of it. He wasn't. Yeah, he, he wasn't, wasn't on board. He wasn't on board with any of it, and he was going to. He was going to. The attack on the Enterprise was incidental. I think if that didn't even happen, he would have done the same thing. I, I think when yeah. we did the episode, we actually talked a lot about, or I did, about the population willingly going into the disintegration. Yeah, chamber. yeah. Who would do that? A cold population. You better yeah. be get jabbed. <laughs> okay. Better get a mortgage. <laughs> that too. Mm. All right, number seven, Aaron of Mercy. This is the Organian, right? Yeah. This yeah. that like and once again, I always underestimated this episode. Uh, you know, the neutral zone, all these treaties and everything. It comes from this episode, right? Yes. Yes. Where the Organians basically said, "We are, we are the, we are the omnipresent enforcers, enforcers in the peace. in the known universe." They, well, and you're, a, con- a contrast to what we just talked about in Taste of Armageddon, they force peace. Yeah. Yeah. So they we're not letting you fight. They force right. peace through their power. They say, we're not allowing this. Yeah. But, I mean, I never knew. I always thought the neutral zone is something, was something that, you know, came about just because of normal diplomatic functions. But it's no. no. It's the Organian said, this is the way well, this is going to Romul- be. The Romulan neutral zone came up about because of. The Earth Romulan the conflict war. of the right. Earth, I mean, the Klingon neutral zone yeah. was, is, in, is imposed. Was imposed yeah. by the Organians. Yeah. And 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 what's cool about that is it's done in the series and it carries forward from there forever. Know? Like that's yeah. not change of everything that's sort of not sync sacrosanct. Yeah, that that's something that remains that way. So we'll see. Maybe they'll they'll mess that up as well. Yeah. 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 Well, s- well, in generation they change it because of the inter. Uh, working between a Klingon hierarchy and there's, there's peace. the Enterprise, there's peace. But there's still Klingon space, Federation space. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Number six, so make glory. Another, make another episode where Kirk gets the taste beat out of his mouth. It's a captain's episode. It shows you someone Captain breaking. Tracy. Yeah. Um, so <sighs> here's, a, here's a question for you. You, got, you have a choice between being on, what was Tracy's ship? Intrepid? It was not the intrepid. I think it was a valiant. It was the valiant. Yeah. You, you're going to be assigned to the valiant or the enterprise. Like which which captain would you have preferred to serve under? Mm. Well, everybody in Tracy's ship died. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Well, you have the high, you have the the foreknowledge of that. But the, the, which captain? Sto- which, which, which captain, captain would you serve? Would you? Did you? Well, you didn't. You didn't get to see Tracy at his best. You. Yeah, you didn't get to see Sam right. Tracy. Yeah, you got a broken Tracy after his ship. After everybody in the ship died, and he's left stranded. Yeah. I think. I think. So I think to, to, I think to Jim. Tracy. Well, I think to Jim's point, we're getting a little off track, but. Sane Tracy is probably just an older, more experienced Kirk. Right. And that's probably preferable until he cracks. Right. You know, you just you're dealing with the reality that this man has cracked. But Tracy's got the experience. He's been out longer. Barring barring uh, the something really unexpected, that's probably a good way to go. As a, as an ensign, not knowing anything, I I would probably choose Tracy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. he's just he's a senior dog. Yeah. He's he's the big the big wolf on. Yeah, he's among, he's among one of the most experienced guys out there. Yeah. yeah. But then again, so was uh, somebody else that we're going to talk about. That's right. Um, yeah. For me, uh, you know, I twain, I drained 12 phasers and they kept coming. <laughs> it's always near and dear to my heart. That's right. uh, <laughs> the Admiral loves a high body count, no matter what. I trained 12 phasers. As long as it's not one of his red shirts. Yeah. I wonder if there's a way of calculating. Well, I, lo- like- I lost one of my favorites in that episode. Oh, That's we all did. Galloway. Yeah. Oh. oh. Ooh. Galloway, Galloway goes out in that one. Yeah, 
But it's tough. Omega Glory. Number five, A Mock Time. It's <laughs> 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 got my ooh wee. That's all I to need. Pring. Got my to pring. To pring. To pring. That's that's pretty good. Um, for me, again, uh, me as a kid, the 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 fight between the fight between Kirk and Spock. No, no, no. me as yeah, a kid no. to, to pring. pring. Well, it was all there. Why is it? Why is it that <laughs> that probably one of our favorite Spock episodes is him being so non-Vulcan? Because it fleshes out Spock's character. Yeah. It, it, it it's a Spock development character. It, it adds a whole another dimension to Spock and the Vulcan culture and the Vulcan yeah. culture. Whoever wrote this episode did something that was badly needed. They they could have just been logical flesh robots, but they built in this thing where like no, they do have emotions and it has to be dealt with. And every seven years, they have needs. You know, things have to get done. It 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 adds a whole another element to the to the character and to the and to the race. Did um, was that a season two episode? I think so. Yes. Okay. It also it also built it also built the relationship between Kirk and Spock. Yes. And, yes. And I think it made McCoy more integral to that relationship. Yeah. Yeah. It went a long way to establish the the, the, the byplay the, the, the byplay that yeah. had between them because yeah. because the dialogue between McCoy and Kirk in that episode was what you would normally see between Kirk and Spock but because Spock was in Palm Far yes he couldn't have those di- but when every time there was those side comments it was with McCoy yeah. he, even though we understand that Kirk is the the titular leader of the show the the way it's written the in the triumvirate between the three main characters works out so beautifully that you know it yeah it 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 fosters something in you yeah. right yeah absolutely yep and that's yeah. the first episode where i remember feeling that it was the three of them i don't know why but okay number four mirror mirror oh <laughs> not my spot not my spot not, <laughs> not my, my problem, problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that it, <clears throat> it because you get a juxtaposition of the Federation and what the Federation would be if they were on the opposite side. Well, what I like about it, because we really brought it out when we did the episode, not would be, could be, because what we realize is the shift is not as extreme as no. we think. Yeah, the, no. the Federation is pretty hardcore it's to a, begin yeah. with. It's a little nudge. Yeah. The Federation is pretty it, hardcore to begin with. I think that <clears throat> the mirror mirror implies an identical reflection and opposite yeah. of it. But to me, I've always, I always deemed it as a parallel universe with a different axis. Like it's not truly opposite. Not it wasn't opposite. truly opposite, but... But just a little different. It was a little different, yeah. Be- because there is a protocol within the Federation to burn down a planet. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And <laughs> and we found out from from uh, surveying other episodes that the agonizers do exist. Uh, it's just in the regular universe. It's not that Starfleet. It's not Starfleet that's using them. Not using them yet. <laughs> not using them <laughs> yeah, yet. So it, yeah. it, it is that. I'll be implementing that change. For and my greater uh, my UWE was in this episode, Marlena. Mine too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marlena. Mine too. Yeah. She's up there. Yeah. Yeah. That's a different top ten. I've been a campus woman before. Do. What do you say? So <laughs> you went through the you'll go through the whole fleet if you need to. Yeah, so. she'll go to give she'll go through the whole fleet if she needs to to get back on top. Yeah, but he wasn't meaning Figuratively that. speaking. He wasn't meaning it that way. He was meaning it Liter- in ambition. So. Literally speaking. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what you, is that? The t- I think you mean figuratively speaking. Yeah. The, t- uh, the, no. <laughs> the tantalus field the tantalus field which is a which is a zero re- residual transporter to nowhere <laughs> <laughs> that's a disintegration device disintegration yeah, de- yeah. all right number three Ta-da. balance of terror <sighs> there's nothing you can say about it it is almost a titular um show yeah it, it it's it is peak it it is peak star wars excuse me, Star Trek regarding um, the military aspect of Star Trek. Yes. Right. Yeah. It, that you have a duty. Doesn't matter what your personal feelings are, what your issues might be. Yeah. Your duty is to protect the Federation and lives are lost in that pursuit of that duty. Yeah. And, you know, for, for, young, for young me, a good amount of action, you know, 
plasma weapons. And, and once again, an, another great uh, protagonist antagonist relationship. Yes. Like yes. You, the Romulan, the Romulan commander, commander was as likable as he yeah. was not Kirk. a villain. Right. M- maybe even more so. Maybe yeah. even more so in in certain regards because he knew he like you. Very, I don't remember Kirk saying, "Well, you know, the, why is the Federation? Why is it about war? Why is it that we're always?" out here doing these type of things and the Romulan commander was was questioning that openly he goes another war for us you know I mean why is it he says yeah why must it always <laughs> be that way you know well and when you look at um what was the one Aaron of Mercy as soon as they said war was on you know Kirk's destroying warbirds you know I mean you know, not yeah. even hesitating yeah yeah it, the the byplay between the characters the cat and mouse game the it's just top notch it, it really is and again because because you can see favorable characteristics in, on both sides and you can see these characters and the one's probably just an older reflection of the other a little further down the road. And the fact that, you know, we talked about it at length in the episode, nobody's, there's no maniacal, crazy person. Right, right, it's right. just, it says these are two people doing their duty. Yeah. Right. That's what's great it about it. It happened to be at odds. And I right. think that we should probably just take a minute and say that, you know, the way that we determine these top 10 episodes, you know, we, we narrowed things down and then we sort of gave a number and then we we looked at those numbers because I think the top three are always going to be controversial. And I, we're okay with that. You know, I think um, an argument can be made that any one of those top three or even any one of these top tens could be someone else's number one. It's just... No, no, no. They got to go by our list or they can okay. just count our podcast. <laughs> you, you like it. What we put down, that's the law. Yeah. Reviews. The views of Captain Dystrom don't necessarily <laughs> reflect the views of men on track. But when you have to make a product, which is what this is, you have so you have to make a decision, and that's what these top these top three. I think. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm just thinking it. That I think the top three are going to be almost universal. Probably that the I, eight, I don't think the two order is. The, the seven, the, eight, nine, the, and the, ten are the order be able to the all. order can be argued, but I think I think our top three and are in everybody's top five probably. I think number two is probably overvalued by us, but we'll see. I don't think so. Really? I don't think so. We'll see. Um, coming in at number two, <laughs> where no man has gone before. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that the number one thing I remember of that is pray to me, Kirk. Pray to me, Kirk. Pray, pray to pray me. To me. As a kid, once again, <laughs> all me. the best episodes is Kirk getting his behind. <laughs> That's right. I'm sorry. That's right. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, we said this in watching one of the episodes today that the number one thing I think of is like when Arnold gets his butt kicked by the uh, predator. Predator. Mm-hmm. The, all the great episodes, somebody's whipping Kirk's behind. Well, right? it, although it, he's our hero. Well, it 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 make, it grounds the hero. The hero was not invulnerable, right? Yeah. And again, I love what I love about it is um, you got Gary Mitchell, who's every bit as much of a heroic character and, as Kirk, and he's Kirk, one of and Kirk's, Kirk's closest friends. He's, he is he is Kirk's best friend at that point. Yeah, he is. And he's a good man, but something happens to him, and and he basically evolves into a godlike figure. And he and can anybody handle godlike power? Ultimate power corrupts. corrupts yeah. And that's what's interesting to me. I mean, and, you know, young Keith, the action's great. Um, hated to see Kelso go out like that, you know. Oh, yeah. I, I would have liked to actually seen Kelso continue in the series, but then there might never have been a, a checkoff maybe. Um, I, but, I think also, too, there was this – we – what, what, what would have happened if they would have went along with Gary Mitchell? See, because the, the, the way the story is, is they began – they realized where his power was going because – Spock's obsession with what happened to the other ship, like yeah. like they they were gonna they self destructed because this individual well they couldn't or something happened and they ended up you know killing everybody in order to stop this individual yeah it's they self like, no they self destructed the ship yeah, yeah they self destructed right. the ship because it, it's so it, Gary Gary becomes a villain just because he, the the prejudice against him is is that as he becomes a super being he won't need them and that mm-hmm. may. May have been true, but we never are given the opportunity to explore that. That, that is correct. It's the fear of mankind to lose self determination right. that caused right. them to do what they did with Mitchell. And Kirk could have left him on a planet, and, and Mitchell would have made the planet into a paradise and done what he did. Uh, but it is the self determination. I think or there's the prejudice of individuals. I think there's things they built into the writing of the episode that tell you that Gary left unchecked is going to be a problem. 
Well, that was the that's the premise, right? Yeah. That's the reason he's got to be stopped because but, right. if he showed up, let's say he showed up the next day and he sat down at the navigator station and yeah. he had the aluminum foil eyes. I mean, I don't I don't disagree with you. They do react and they do have a fear reaction. Right. But there's little things they do in the writing of the episode to let you know they're right. Yeah. That's that's the thing. Well, I think when they're getting him on the transporter mm-hmm. pad and he says he was going to squish them all like well, bugs. Well, yeah. well, he tells he tells Kirk, "If I were you, I would kill me." Yeah. He says Spock's right. It's like I'm outgrowing you. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. I'm 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 evol- I'm evolving to a point where I don't see you as necessary. But I'm wondering if that evolution was directed because he picked up that they knew they needed to destroy. You see what I'm saying? Like right. it's, pro- it's, it, it, it's 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 a chicken, chicken, or, the egg. chicken or the egg, egg it's argument. It's a chicken or the yeah. egg argument. But at the end of the day, I think it's like, you know, and this being the second pilot, yeah, it sort of set the stage for everything that comes. Later. Everything that comes from it, and it and it was. You can see the difference between that and the cage, which is the original, which pilot. didn't mm-hmm. make our top ten, just because it just didn't. It just did <laughs> because it. You know, it's almost a standalone thing, but right. you can see the difference between a Pike and a Kirk in that episode and the direction the suits wanted the to, series to, to go. go in. Yeah, yeah, because Kirk was had a lot of feelings and he was him and Han, but when it came down to it, he did what he for, needed to for do. For me, the only reason this is not number one is it doesn't expand the universe of Trek in and of itself like our number one does. Right. That's true. Exactly. That's true. This is a character-driven episode. It's a great episode, but it doesn't expand the universe. Because of of the limitations of that, it was the pilot and the changes they made afterward. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's limited in that respect. All right. Number two. And we'll get to number one. And then number one. Let's move on. Number one. Drum roll. Is anybody really surprised? (laughs) Doomsday Machine. 100%. 100%. Go. The f- the first view of a broken captain. Yeah. I don't know if it's the first view. Uh, Does it come before? Uh, I'd have to uh, look. At, I, it's it's early. It's pretty early. But it it may not be the first, but it's certainly the most uh, potent. It's, it's yeah. the best written. Yeah, without a doubt. And, and in some ways, a little more understandable than the others. Like we were talking about Captain Tracy. Tracy loses his crew as well. He does. Tracy's stranded on but a, on a planet by himself. Tracy's response to it is a little bit. Tracy's trying to survive, but to see Decker is different. Yeah, well, Decker, Decker, Decker broke completely Decker, because right because having done all he could to save his crew and do the right thing, he still lost. Mm-hmm. Still lost. Yeah, and Doomsday Machine all time favorite. And you don't get to be a starship captain losing. No, no, no. The the whole arc of, and again, not lazy writing. You can look at Deckard as a villain, but then he's sympathetic in other times. There's a redemption arc in here. It's just very well written. It's very, it's very well executed. Um, the fact that you have, conf- the fact that it can give the viewer conflicting emotions as you're watching the episode. One minute you're mad at Deckard, one minute you kind of understand Deckard, and Deckard gets to be the hero again. You know, when you, when you were hating him before, you know, it, it's it's just an excellent episode. Yes, it is, without a doubt. Yeah, hundred percent. That's all I mean. I mean, we've done it twice. We've done it as a <laughs> redux. It's like, it's just it has everything. It it it, including Decker, it shows the best of all the characters. Yeah, including like Scotty. Like yeah, it like just Scotty's competence from the very beginning. It's like you, recharging the phaser bank when he wasn't told to the repairs that he was able to do it has everything a a sci-fi episode needs yes everything a body needs it's in there that could have that episode could have been stretched and made into a movie easily it it could have been made a movie easily yeah i think i think yeah absolutely if if you if you had an opportunity to shoot a 1980s episode wrath of khan you can't you can't touch that but if you think about if you were able to do an updated version of that, which I think they've done in other episodes, but the story itself was strong enough that you could, you could do more with it's, it. It's it's not too off V'ger, other than seeing a captain have to deal with it directly. Right, because right. the v- V'ger was a planet destroying entity coming back 
potential solar system yeah. and they had to deal with it now, doomsday machine is the exact same thing other than you get the interpersonal issue of a captain who did his best and got broke right by the monster right there it is top 10 mot top 10 disagree with us in the comments <laughs> or agree with us you will accept it and like it <laughs> and that's been men on track top 10 out. Thank you.